It's time for Pass the Mic. You know we like to bring in comedians for this segment to keep the laughs going, or in most cases, get the laughs going. Today, we're continuing our discussion of Halloween costumes and the ones people are wearing the most. This year, the top searches for costumes, according to Pinterest, are various characters from Stranger Things due to their new season, Elvis Presley outfits due to the new movie about him, very underrated, by the way. I saw it on a, on a plane. Navy fighter pilots in honor of Top Gun Maverick. Also, pretty good movie. Saw it on a plane. People wearing a suit and tie with a blood-soaked plastic to recreate Patrick Bateman from American Psycho. Nothing happened with that movie. P people are just sick. So we brought in the amazing Elena Torres to talk about these and a few other topics. Take a listen. How do you feel about this year's trends? Looking at the actual costumes people are picking, and I saw for Stranger Things, a lot of the 11 outfit is like the jumpsuit, the 80s jumpsuit that she wore in the latest season. And to me, that's a crime. If you're going to dress up as 11, you got to go full shaved head, hospital gown. You know, but I know a lot of girls like, like to look cute on Halloween. And it's like, if you really need to look cute, just leave the hospital gown open in the back. <laughs> yeah, you know, sure. that's, 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 that's me. That's the only way you're doing cute 11. <laughs> That's a that's a, that's a fair point, but it's it's a quick way to get real cute real fast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You you, you want attention on Halloween, ladies? That's the way. <laughs> what is your best Halloween costume ever? One year, I dressed up as Garth from Wayne's World, and mm. I looked scary, similar to Garth. <laughs> like real, like same facial features. Like I really, and I went to a thrift store and like bought an old Aerosmith shirt. It was like too good. But the worst part about it, at least you can see some of my Halloween traumas. I did it with a girlfriend of mine, but she was like cute Wayne. She just like wore a hat and like cropped a little black shirt. And I was like really Garth. Yeah. Like I got the hair done. Like I really looked you like really Garth. went like for some it. Some people said I look like, you know how Garth has a girlfriend, I think in, Wayne, in Wayne's world too. Uh huh. Like I, I look like that. I mean, I did a great job. Like when I take my makeup off and put glasses on, I look a lot like her. And she sold out for cute Wayne. She totally sold out. Yeah, but okay. looking back, that was one of my strongest costumes I think I'll ever met. TikTok has brought a strange edition of the classic board game to light. The version is Monopoly's longest game ever edition. It features double the spaces as a normal board and only one dice and you can't move as many spaces as the OG, and it doesn't end until one person owns every single property. One five-star Amazon review dubbed it the most effective way to punish unruly children. Would you play this? I thought Monopoly already was the longest game ever. I agree. It before is. this started. Yeah. So I'm like, why would I do an even longer version of that game? And I don't know, having kids, if you're going to punish your kids, I don't know, These are you into like the long drawn out, like mental punishment? I only have a toddler, so like she can't focus on anything longer than 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. So the idea of a long punishment feels like it would be more of a punishment for me than for her. That's a fair point. Fortunately, my daughter's young enough where my wife and I haven't really fully developed our punishment platforms. Right. Some ideas have been thrown out, but we haven't really right. like, you know, right. we don't have it together. So I'm just taking information in from other parents now. Well, I think so far I'll, I have a lot of ideas, you know, of how I'm going to punish or how I'm going to parent. And then the moment comes and I don't necessarily do what I think is so great. Like I was really obsessed when my kid was a baby for her to eat healthy. I was obsessed. Right. I made sure that she always ate healthy food, like healthy snacks. I didn't want her to have any junk. And then she would go to the playground and she started stealing like <laughs> chocolate bars from other kids strollers and other moms thought I wasn't feeding my kids. <laughs> so I had to change my idea on how to feed her. You know, I feel like that's parenting. Like you have ideas of how you want to do stuff. And then it, it actually in practice, you're like, maybe I should. Chill. You know, it's funny, Elena, like I've realized one of my pet peeves for other people is enabling. Like when I watch shows like Intervention or stuff like that, and you got the kid who's living there rent free at 35, yeah. and I'm like, kick him out. Yeah. He's a bum. <laughs> I'm like, he get him out of there. And yeah. my wife walked by one day and she, she was just watching me just going off about this parent enabling their kid. And she goes, would you at any point in your life kick Amara out onto the street? And I said, not a chance. No. There's no chance. 
no, what are you going to do? I thought about the same thing. I'm like, well, we're going to teach our kid independence. You know, after college, she's not moving back home. And now I'm like, I, I would be, I'm the type of mom to be like, please come back home. I miss you. Right, right, right. <laughs> send this footage to Amara of me admitting that she's never kicked out. If you want to hear more from Elena, check out the Counter Currents podcast. She does that for the Arlington Draft House. You can find it on your favorite podcasting platform. We'll be right back.